Chapter 52 Callum Mercy Hospital was a sad joke. The rundown emergency room was busting at the seams and then some. It looked like many of the people were not casualties from the shopping center. The walking, walking wounded. There were people crying, shouting. One woman was screaming at regular five-second intervals and no one was taking the least notice of her. The air smelled of strong, cheap disinfectant. It was so strong that I could almost taste it as it caught at the back of my throat, but it still couldn't quite mask the nastier smells of vomit and blood and urine it was trying to disguise. The whole place reeked of barely organized chaos. All the nurses were knots and all but one of the doctors. I wondered what a cross doctor was doing at a knot hospital. Building a stairway to heaven, no doubt. I looked at my brother. He'd been involved in all this chaos and carnage around us. How did it make him feel to see the results of his handiwork? But he wasn't looking around. He was looking down at the ground like his gaze was permanently stuck there. Are you all right, Mum? I'll survive. Mum sat on one of the rock-hard benches, her face rigid and set as she cradled her purple-blue full swollen finger. It looked awful. I kept stealing glances at Mum, wondering why she wasn't crying. It must have hurt like blazes. Are you sure you're okay, Mum? Jude asked, looking up at last. Yes. Ten seconds later. Are you all right, Mum? I wasn't surprised when she finally barked at him. No, I'm not all right, Jude. I've broken my finger. It hurts like hell, and I'm sick of your stupid questions. So just shut up, okay? Everyone around us turned to look. Jude lowered his head, his cheeks flaming. Mom looked at Jude's bent head and sighed, Look, I'm sorry, love. She carefully removed her good hand from underneath her bat and tried to put it on Jude's shoulder. Jude shrugged it off. Jude, I'm mad at your dad, and I'm taking it out on you. I'm sorry, okay? Mom put a hand on Jude's shoulder this time. He didn't try to remove it. Okay, Mom said softly. Jude shrugged and nodded at the same time. Callum, go and get yourself a drink or something, said Mum. Why? I want to talk to your brother in private. I have something to tell him. Mum, please, Jude began. This has nothing to do with the LM, Mum told him. This is about you and me. Can I stay? No, do as you're told, Mum ordered. I walked over to the vending machine on the other side of the waiting room, but I wasn't thirsty. Besides which, I didn't have any money. Besides which, it was out of order anyway. It looked like someone had given it a good kicking, or tried to at any rate. I leaned against it, watching Mum speak earnestly to Jude. Then, even from where I was standing, I saw all the color drain from Jude's face as he stared at Mum. He leapt up, profoundly shocked. Mum pulled him back down to sit next to her and carried on talking. She leaned in toward Jude, speaking rapidly with animation and urgency that showed she was telling Jude something very serious. Very serious. I straightened up as I watched them, wondering on earth what was going on. Jude started shaking his head, slowly at first, then more and more quickly. Whatever Mum was telling him, he didn't like it. He didn't believe it. Or maybe he didn't want to believe it. I couldn't stand it any longer. I started walking back to them. By the time I reached them, Jude was looking straight ahead, his face pale, his eyes almost feverishly bright. Mum, sit down, Callum. I sat down next to my brother. Mum put her hand on Jude's shoulder. He turned to look at her, still stunned. Jude, darling, I... Excuse me. Jude jumped up and headed for the exit without a backward glance. Where is he going? I don't know, Mum replied unhappily. Is he coming back? I don't know. Why is he so upset? Not now, Callum, okay? It wasn't, but I let it drop. Almost half an hour later, Jude came back. He sat down in his original place without saying a word. Are you okay, love? Mom asked gently. Jude gave her a look like nothing I'd ever seen before, full of hurt and love and anger. Mom actually blushed and turned away. Seconds later, Jude did the same thing. It was obvious neither of them was going to tell me what was going on. The minutes crawled by as we sat in stony silence. Mrs. Margaret McGregor, a nurse finally called out from inside the room next to the reception desk, Mom stood up slowly, doing her best to protect her finger. Mrs. Margaret, she's here, I called out. She's coming. Mom tried to stand up. I attempted to help her, but it was a hard going. Are you trying to melt into that chair? Are you going to get up and help? I snapped at my brother. In a daze, Jude stood up. We studied Mom between us and all walked into the nurse's little cubby hole. My mom needs to see a doctor, I said, when we barely got on our feet into the room. All patients are assessed here first before they see a doctor, the nurse informed us. That's fine, Mom said, casting a warning look at me. The nurse shut the door behind us as Mum and Jude sat down. I stood up behind him. The nurse headed back to the chair, stating, I'm Nurse Carter. I'll be your primary nurse while you're at the hospital. Good, fine, Mum nodded. Formalities first, I'm afraid. Before we can administer any kind of medical care, I need to see your ID cards. Sorry, Mum frowned. It's a new government ruling. All patient IDs have to be checked and registered. I think it's their way of trying to stop benefits windows. I beg your pardon, Mum's frown deepened. I'm not on benefits. It doesn't matter. This hospital and every other not hospital in the country gets a certain amount of money per patient we treat. The government is claiming that some hospitals have been trying to abuse the system. 
So the government's foolproof plan, the sneer in Nurse Carter's voice made it only too clear what she thought of the so-called foolproof plan, is to check each patient's ID card, photo, and fingerprint so that the patients can't hop around from hospital to hospital getting sickness certificates and hospitals can't lie about the numbers of patients they treat. That's the theory anyway. And if I refuse to hand over my ID card, Mum asked, then we can't treat you. The Nurse Carter shrugged regretfully. I don't think I have it. I left it at home. Nurse Carter sighed, then I'll need the ID cards of at least two other people who can vouch for you. I resent this. I'm not trying to defraud anyone, Mum fumed. I know, and no one here is accusing you of anything of the kind, but unfortunately we have no choice. Mum lifted up her hand. Although the palm was facing down and the back of her hand upward, Mum's index finger was a V pointing out at the yellow ceiling. Why don't you just chop off my finger and hold it for ransom until I can prove who I say I am? That won't be necessary, the nurse smiled. She turned her gaze on Judy me. These are your sons? Yes. Mom asked her brusquely. They're fine boys. I think so. Mom allowed herself a faint trace of pride as she looked straight at Jude. Very fine boys. As Jude blushed, I ruffled his hair. Get off, he scowled at my grinning face. Which one's the oldest? Mom paused for a moment as she remembered Lynette. Jude here, she supplied before my brother could, and this is Callum, my youngest. Okay, Jude, Nurse Carter's smile. May I see your ID card? Jude dug into the pocket and pulled it out. I did the same. Nurse Carter swiped them through the machine that attached to her computer. It looked a bit like a machine from a checking credit card. What's that for? Jude asked. All done. The nurse handed Jude back <coughs> ID to him. She held out her hand to give me back mine. What is that? I asked. I hadn't failed to notice that she hadn't answered Jude's questions. It just stores your ID details and thumbprints on our hospital database. I don't want my son's fingerprints stored. Mom leapt to her feet, her face pale. Wipe it off now. Don't worry, Mrs. McGregor. As soon as you're able to bring your ID card, your son's details will be deleted. You're sure, Mom said slowly, sitting back down? Positive. That's standard hospital procedure. Nurse Carter looked from Mom to Jude and me back again. She was trying and failing to keep the curiosity out of her expression. Jude looked down at his hands, and then I realized what was going on. So much for my so-called intelligence. I hadn't realized until now why Mom had panicked at the thought of Jude's prints being on file somewhere. Today was obviously my day for being incredibly slow on the uptake. Nurse Carter lifted Mum's right hand by the wrist. How did you do this? It was an accident, Mum mumbled. I hit something I shouldn't have. Nurse Carter gave Mum a considering look. I see, was all she said. The nurse examined Mum's hand very carefully, turning it this way and that as gently as she could. But even at her gentlest, the nurse still made beads of sweat break out over Mum's forehead and brought a pained shimmer to her eyes. Well, you've definitely dislocated something in there, Nurse Carter said at last. I mean, duh, we already knew that. And the look Mum gave the nurse said as much. Yes, I know, but it never hurts to get a second opinion on these things. We'll need an x-ray, and then we'll get a doctor to sort you out, okay? Mum nodded. We had to wait an hour before one of the only two x-ray rooms in the entire hospital became available. And then we had to wait another 45 minutes before a doctor came in to see us. The doctor finally gave Mum two injections at the base of her finger to numb any pain she might feel while he res reset her bone. But he wriggled the needle around so much each time that poor Mum was almost biting a chunk out of her lip by the time he finished. He prodded it a few times. Does that hurt? The doctor asked. No. You're sure? Of course I'm sure. I'm hardly going to say no otherwise, am I? The doctor acknowledged that Mum had a point with the nod of his head. He carefully manipulated her finger, feeling along on both sides before giving it a hard tug. Jude and I winced, and I for one closed my eyes. He shouldn't have given us some warning. I didn't, re didn't realize he was going to just yank it. Did that hurt? He asked immediately. Mum shook her head. The injunctions did. She said that didn't. Good, the doctor smiled. He took a bandage out of his pocket and started binding Mum's index finger to her middle finger. We'll need to keep these out of water and bandage for the next three weeks. Three weeks? I can't keep my fingers bandaged up for that long. I'm a housemaid. How can I clean anything with my fingers like this? You either keep them bandaged for three weeks or you can forget about being able to use them at all, the doctor warned. You must give your fingers a chance to heal. But doctor, I mean it, Mrs. McGregor. If you don't take my advice, you'll regret it. Mum scowled at him, but she got the message. You okay now, Mum? I asked as we left our curtain cubicle. I'll live, Mum's voice was clipped with worry. She headed straight back to Nurse Carter's station. Using her left hand, she knocked on the door, three smart taps that signaled business. The door opened almost immediately. I'll be back first thing in the morning with my D card. I'm going to trust that you'll delete my son's ID info from your database, Mum said. Which son? Nurse Carter asked. Both of them, Mum declared. Don't worry, Nurse Carter smiled gently. It's as good as done already. You have nothing to worry about. Mum visibly relaxed. Good, good. Thanks for all your help. My pleasure. Nurse Carter shut the door as Mum turned to leave. Moments later, we were out of the ER, thank goodness, and on our way home. 
It was a good 40-minute walk back to home, but the early April night wasn't too chilly. I looked up and made a wish on the first star I saw, something Sefi had taught me, the same wish I made on every star I saw. Is your finger still okay? Jude asked Mom. Yes, the injections haven't worn off yet, Mom smiled. They walked side by side back home with me trailing behind them. Our IDs were on the hospital database. Why did that worry me so much? Don't be silly, I told myself. You're agonizing over nothing. How did this thing going? If you're looking for trouble, you'll surely find it.